Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human body is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, regenerating, renewing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are your go-to source for information, clear, precise, easy to understand information, easy to implement information. And we welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program or help a loved one wean themselves off their medications and get on a supplement program, we're here for you at 844-236-6010. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236. 6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on our program, please go to brightsideben.com. You can order products right off the website. You can also go to my blog, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com and order longevity products right off the website. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to join the Brightside Ben team and start yourself a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, we'd love to have you aboard. Call uh, uh, 866-735-2470 and tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, make some money selling longevity products. You're not going to be able to start any other business for $25, that's for sure. Certainly not a business where you can help other folks and help other folks at the most fundamental level, and that is the level of their health, plus make some money. A little bit of money or a lot of money. Some folks are making significant dollars. You can make a small amount of money, whatever you decide. Call 866-735-2470. They can help you, we, uh, help you uh, understand how this whole longevity system works. It's not that complicated, really. 866-735-2470 is their number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth 5% Retinol Gel, made with a whole bunch of vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrances, no oils, no silicon, no wax, no water, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of my Truth Skin Health formulations. Truth 5% Retinol Gel softens your skin, anti-ages your skin, stimulates collagen production, helps with anti-hyperpigmentation, uh, helps lighten dark spots, Truth 5% Retinol Gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Balm. You can find out all about them at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we are talking ketogenesis, the ketogenic diet and its numerous health benefits. The ketogenic diet is a calm-you-down diet. It's anti-cancer, anti-diabetes, high performance. It's great for seizure disorders, Parkinson's disease. What more do you want from a, from a, a protocol, an eating protocol? As far as, as far as heart health, cardiovascular health is concerned, the heart runs on ketones. Yesterday we talked about all the drugs, the, the history and the, and the uh, logic or illogic of using cardiovascular medication, statin drugs and beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. These form the mainstay. The, these are the, the, the primary protocol for dealing with cardiovascular health issues. If you go to a doctor, that's what you're going to get is you're going to get drugs. If he says you got a heart problem, you're going to get prescription medicines. Nobody's going to think about going with the ketogenic diet, which is an amazingly important heart health diet. Ketones are 
high power compounds that all the, all the fast moving systems in the body benefit from, particularly the heart, the brain, and the skin. And there's also supplements that you could use to support the ketogenic diet. We spent a lot of time talking about carnitine. Carnitine is not only important for folks going ketogenic, Carnitine helps the body utilize fats, but carnitine is also stupendously valuable for the heart. Unlike drugs, carnitine works by improving heart health. Drugs don't work to improve heart health. Drugs don't work to improve any health. That's all you need to know, folks. If you're taking a drug because you think you're going to get better by taking it, all you got to do is understand this. There is not a single drug on planet Earth that will improve your health. Period. End of story. Take that to the bank or to your doctor. There is not a single drug that will improve your health. Oh, they'll improve your markers. They'll lower your test scores or raise them, but they will not improve your health. They cannot improve your health. They're processed as poisons. They're de they require detoxification by the body. That means they are toxins, and it is absolutely idiotic for any healthcare professional to think that leaving a patient on a drug for a long term for months or for years or for decades is in any way in their health interests. On the other hand, carnitine works to improve your heart health. It doesn't shut down body biochemistry. It improves biochemistry. It upregulates biochemistry. Carnitine, like uh, all supplements, work to improve our health. What a brilliant idea. Drugs do not ever, ever improve our health. They improve statistics. They improve test scores. They improve numbers, but never health. They cannot improve health, even if they lower the so-called risk. There's not a single drug that is not going to have a negative impact on your body. And on top of all that, they cost us nutrition. You're going to burn through your carnitine by taking a drug. You're going to burn through your B-complex by taking a drug. You're going to burn through your electrolytes and your vitamin C. And all of that means, by the way, that if you are on a prescription drug, it becomes extra important that you get on your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You could think of your Beyond Tangy Tangerine as an anti-drug side effect supplement. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine protects you from drug toxicity. The ultimate EFAs protect you from drug toxicity. Your Sweeties protects you from drug toxicity. All nutrition protects you from drug toxicity. Not the le uh, for many reasons, not the least of which is the fact that drugs cost you nutrition. As far as carnitine goes, if you have heart disease, ischemia, angina, heart failure, you've had a heart attack, I would strongly encourage you to be using a gram or two grams of L-carnitine or a deluxe form called L or called propionic L-carnitine every day. That's propionic, P-R-O-P. I-O-N-I-C, L-carnitine, propionic L-carnitine. L-carnitine works too. Propionic is just a deluxe form. There's another form of carnitine called acetyl L-carnitine. This one is really important for the brain. And carnitine is not just a heart health supplement. It's a brain health supplement. Yes, carnitine is important for brain health. And the acetyl form, acetyl L-carnitine, A-C-E-T-Y-L, acetyl L-carnitine, or some folks call it Alcar, A-L-C-A-R, Alcar, is really important for the brain. Alcar is like a natural Prozac. It helps support serotonin. If you're on Prozac, get yourself some Alcar. You may be able to wean yourself off your Prozac. You may not even need your Prozac, and if you do, you'll be able to get, a, uh, if you do take Alcar, you'll be able to use a lower dose of your Prozac, and that means less toxicity. Supplements allow you to lower your dose of drugs in many cases. Alcar also is epigenetic. It's an epigenetic factor. Epigenetics, epigenetic factors are substances that turn genes on and off. I'm not going to belabor the whole point about genetics and the, the failed genetic model. The fact is, is that epigenetics transcends the genes in the sense that epigenetic factors turn genes on and off. And guess what? Carnitine is an epigenetic factor, particularly when it comes to brain health. You know, carnitine is, uh, in addition to uh, being a natural Prozac, it's also got global feel-good effects. We'll talk about that when we come back from our, brain, our, our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. You've right, we are back on 
The Bright Side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or anything we're talking about today, the ketogenic diet, carnitine for the brain, carnitine for the heart, nutritional supplementation, or our Truth Skin Health products, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to say hi and contribute to the conversation, we love hearing from you. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll get your calls here in our next segment. So hang tight if you're on hold. If you're interested in joining the Brightside Ben team, please call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business. And if you would like to check out our bone broth protein, Jordan Rubin's formulation, bone broth protein, truly a superfood. If you can't make bone broth and you want to enjoy the benefits, the protein benefits of bone broth, you want to know about our bone broth protein. It comes in three flavors, turmeric, chocolate, and vanilla. I personally like the chocolate bone broth protein. You can add some creatine in there, some glutamine. I put some essential fatty acids and coconut oil in mine. It is yummy. And it's got lots of beauty cofactors in it. If you want a good protein for your skin, for helping build collagen, fight the effects of aging, as well as for bone health and joint health, and also for the health of your blood vessels and the health of your digestive tract. If you're dealing with leaky gut syndrome, which is a somewhat ubiquitous health challenge, certainly if you're dealing with a health challenge in general, a systemic health challenge, particularly an autoimmune disease, the odds are very good that you're dealing with leaky gut syndrome, building and strengthening the connective tissue in the digestive tract is all t- one of the best strategies for folks dealing with autoimmunity and making sure you're getting connective tissue building amino acids like those you'll find in our bone broth protein is an important strategy if you want to build up the gut and prevent, reduce, or uh, eliminate the symptoms of leaky gut syndrome, which include autoimmune diseases, as well as skin problems like uh, eczema and psoriasis. Okay, so we're talking carnitine, carnitine for the heart, carnitine for the brain. If you want to use carnitine as an antidepressant or to improve brain health issues or to improve the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, you want to go with the acetyl L carnitine form. That's uh, also called Alcar, acetyl L carnitine. Carnitine is a fat processing supplement. It's an amino acid like substance. It's actually not technically an amino acid, it's made up of two amino acids. And when you think carnitine, you want to think fats. When you think brain health, you want to think fats. The brain is composed of 60% or so fat. If you're using the ketogenic diet to improve the symptoms of dementia, or if you want to improve brain function in general for memory, creativity, learning, you'd be extra smart to throw in a little carnitine into your daily supplemental program, one or two grams a day. Carnitine is not an essential nutrient. Your body can make it. But if you have heart disease or you have any issues with fats, if you've had a gallbladder removed or you're one of the 100 million Americans with heart disease or you're one of the 100 million Americans who has liver disease, you might want to think about supplementing with carnitine. If you're one of the 80 million Americans who has digestive health issues, if you got intestinal problems, you might want to think about supplementing with carnitine. If you've had your gallbladder removed, you might want to think about supplementing with carnitine. Carnitine is only found in animal foods. Carne means meat. So vegetarians who are interested in, in supporting carnitine might want to think about getting on a, on a supplement. One of the most important roles for carnitine is in the muscle. If you're a bodybuilder, athlete, if you're lifting weights, carnitine supplementation is something that you want to consider. Muscle uses fat for energy, and one of the signs of carnitine problems or deficiencies in carnitine is low muscle tone, decreased muscle tone, or decreased ability to do aerobic or endurance type activities. Muscle pain with exertion can be a sign that you have problems with with carnitine. Cardiomyopathy, remember the heart has got muscle. It's a muscle tissue. Cardiomyopathy is another sign that you may have an issue with carnitine. Muscle uses fat for energy, or I should say prefers to use fat for energy. Sugar can fuel muscle temporarily, and muscle does have a, a storage department for some extra sugar, when you burn through your sugar stores, your muscles will release some sugar from its uh, its storage depot, its storage, its muscle storage uh, area. It's called glycogen. But because your muscles are constantly working, it's very difficult to depend for the muscles to depend on sugar as a fuel, and that's why muscle cells have evolved to be fat burners. 
Fat is stored in fat cells under conditions of high energy. When there's lots of energy coming into the body in the form of food, calories, this is how the body stores energy, and from, uh, it gets energy from calories and then it stores it and under conditions of high energy, and this is what most of us are doing, we're getting lots of energy from our foods via sugar, via carbohydrates, all that energy is going to get stored in fat. And under conditions of low energy, that fat is going to get released. That's an important point. This is how you lose body fat, is by stopping the energy input into the body, i.e. fasting and caloric restriction. Or by slowing down the energy input, as in the ketogenic diet. When you eat fat in the ketogenic diet, you're certainly getting energy, but you're getting energy in a slow, sustained release fashion. Under conditions of slow energy, slow sustained release input of energy, the body has a tendency to burn it more readily than storing it. Under conditions of super high energy input, the body has a tendency to, to, uh, uh, to store it rather than burn it. When the body is electrically run down, that is when it doesn't have a lot of energy coming in or when the energy input is slow, it has a tendency to burn. Just like your eye, just think of your iPhone. When your iPhone electricity, uh, when, when the electrical charge in your iPhone runs down, when your bio, it's similar to your biological battery running down. But unlike your iPhone, the body has a backup. That's your fat. Your fat is a backup. And that's, how you, that's a, a great way to think of your fat. It's an energy backup, and it can recharge you, just like when you recharge your iPhone. Problem is, we get so much energy from our food in this easy-to-absorb fashion, i.e. sugars, that fat never, we never need to burn the fat. It never gets released. There's so much sugar in the body that not only does the body burn it, it stores it. And then, on top of all of that, you get the hormone insulin, and insulin acts as a storage hormone. And for most of us, because we've been eating so much sh sugar and we've got so much energy coming into the body, our insulin is way high. When the, uh, over the course of time, as insulin, insulin levels rise, the body stops listening to insulin. That's called insulin resistance. And so more insulin has to be produced. And more, this is kind of a, a cycle that goes on for many of us for, for our whole lives. High levels of sugar lead to high levels of insulin. The body stops listening to insulin, so more insulin has to be produced. The body stops listening to that insulin, so more insulin has to be produced. Ultimately, the body completely stops listening to insulin, and then you got to take insulin shots. And because of this whole issue with fat and, and storage of energy, it leads to obesity. Elevated insulin le leads to obesity, and this is why type 2 diabetes is a weight problem as much as anything else. In fact, if you want to lose weight, the fastest way to do it is to work with your blood sugar. Not work with your food, but work with your sugar. Not necessarily stopping eating, but reducing the amount of sugar and carbohydrates that you eat. Diet is so helpful for fat loss because under conditions of low carb, the body, uh, the, uh, the body burns its fat. All right, we'll finish up when we come back from our break and take your phone calls as well. 844-23. We are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. And we've got four plus years, five years of archives at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. Also, our blog at pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories as well as blog posts, and also uh, if you want to purchase longevity products, you can do that right off the website, and you can join, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website as well, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. It's 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844-236-6010. Hang tight if you're on hold. Uh, we'll get to you here in a moment, and we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. A couple things I want to talk about here, uh, studies in the news, articles, high-fat diet starves the brain. Apparently, a high-fat diet of three days in mice leads to a reduction in the amount of glucose that reaches the brain. And this finding was uh, from a research group in Cologne, Germany. High-fat diet, according to this article anyway, a high-fat diet throws our bodies out of kilter. Hmm, interesting. And then they talk about 
how a high fat diet reduces nutrition to the brain. And this is a very interesting point because we always talk about the importance or the, the benefits, I should say, of a high fat diet. Well, it turns out according to this article anyway, a high fat diet will starve your brain of glucose. You say, well, what's up with that? This is the, uh, this points us to the idea of keto adaptation. A high fat diet supports the production of ketones. A high fat diet uh, supports uh, uh, supports the, the burning of fat over the course of time. And this is where it becomes important to understand keto adaptation. You will get brain fog and headaches, possibly, not always, but possibly as you shift into fat burning. And this is because, as this article points out, a high fat diet starves the brain. But what they don't tell you in this article, that over the course of time, the body corrects itself. It adjusts for the amount of fat that's coming into the body. And this is also why it's important to go low carb while you're going high fat. The ketogenic diet is not just a high fat diet. It is a high fat, low carb diet. You can't just do high fat without adjusting your intake of carbohydrates. And yes, over the uh, uh, it may take a week or so or two weeks or three weeks for the headaches and the brain fog to go away. But you will be happy that you uh, went through this keto adaptation period. Here's a juicy one from the Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. Diabetes is pri uh, predominantly an intestinal disease. I love this. Where have you heard this before? Not your endocrinologist, that's for sure. Not your doctor. Not the mainstream media. Not the mainstream medical model. Because they don't treat diabetes as an intestinal disease. They treat it as a blood sugar disease. But if you've been listening to The Bright Side for any length of time, you know that blood sugar diseases dis glycemia follows intestinal problems. The microbiome, the gut bacteria play a major role in how the body processes energy. Sugar is energy. You can rest assured lurking behind your diabetes is an intestinal problem. You, wanna, uh, you want scientific proof? Google, diabetes is predominantly an intestinal disease. Here's another juicy one. The dynamics of human infant microbiome in the development of type 1 diabetes. Yes, it's not just type 2 diabetes that is an intestinal disease. It's type 1 diabetes also. I got a nasty email from some guy a couple of months ago. I was on George Norris on Coast to Coast, and I said that diabetes is an intestinal issue. As I say all the time, diabetes is an intestinal issue. And uh, this guy wrote me an email. He said, well, you should have made a distinction between type 2 and type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. He got very upset with me. We had a little back and forth because I said, you know what? Autoimmune diseases are also intestinal issues, which means type 1 diabetes is an intestinal issue also. It's a microbiome issue. This is from uh, the journal uh, Cell Host and Microbe. The dynamics of, human infant, of the human infant microbiome and the development of and progression toward type 1 diabetes. A marked drop in diversity was observed as type, and this is the diversity of the gut bacteria, uh, was observed as type 1 diabetes progressed. No kidding. We talk about this all the time. The things you hear on this program, folks, the ideas you hear on this program are not ideas that you're going to hear in the mainstream media. You're not even going to hear it in many of the alternative uh, uh, health media either. These are, these are ideas that I've come up with from 32 years of working with patients and 32 years of doing research. And the combination of working with patients and doing with research has allowed me to form a picture of how the body works that nobody talks about. That's what I call the triangle of disease. All disease needs to be backtracked to the gut and then the, then the blood sugar system and then the adrenal thyroid complex. All diseases. Tomorrow we'll talk about, uh, about uh, some more about L, uh, acetyl L-carnitine in the brain. And I also want to talk about acetyl L-carnitine for Alzheimer's disease patients. Hang on, we'll get to your calls here in just a sec, so don't go away. Uh, new drug, Dynavil XR. This is awesome. Dynavil XR is the, quote, first and only extended release drug for ADHD. Guess what it is? Amphetamines. Literally, that's the drug. I'm not exaggerating. That's what it's called. It's called amphetamine, liquid amphetamine. Now, who in his right mind would think it's a good idea to give a six-year-old or seven-year-old kid an amphetamine? 
and many, some of you guys know, I got some emails on this, that uh, opioid drugs have now been approved for six-year-olds. Uh, Oxycontin for six-year-olds. Why would our six-year-olds need to be drugged and medicated? What is going on, people? If your kid has ADHD, he doesn't need amphetamine. If your kid has ADHD, he needs the B-complex, particularly thiamine and also niacin. If your kid has ADHD, he needs zinc. Zinc picolinate being the best form. If your kid has ADHD, he needs essential fatty acids. If your kid has ADHD, he needs to be taken off the sh uh, blood sugar spiking foods. And of course, if your kid has ADHD, he probably should be working on his gut microbiome with a good probiotic supplement like the Nightly Essence. What your kid doesn't need if he has ADHD is speed, amphetamine. Oh my God. This is a, an e-farm alert. I get these things from drug companies all the time, and they're very proud of their liquid amphetamine. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny. Anyway, 844-236-6010 is our number. Sandy in Florida, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello, how are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you? Um, I'm in a little bit of a pickle. Um, okay. My mom's not eating anymore because she's afraid to use the bathroom because it's so painful because she has oh, sciatica. No. Oh, my gosh. Did you hear the show yesterday, by the way? I, I heard half of it, and then that was it. Okay. I had a guy on uh, Luke Adler. He, he was talking about sciatica being related to the kidneys. Okay. And, which is not uncommon. I mean, makes sense because sciatica is so common and kidney fun dysfunction is, is common. So here's the thing. When I think of sciatica, I, I don't necessarily relate it to the kidneys, although you can. I relate it to inflammation, which means blood sugar and digestion. Now, over the course of time, as the body starts to break down, inflammatory factors can build up. And so you have other, other things that are involved. But the first thing you want to focus on is the digestive system and the blood sugar system when you're dealing with sciatica. Hang on because we've got to take a break, Sandy. I'll get you some supplements that your mom can use and some strategies that she can use for sciatica pain. So don't go away. And if you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information on the Bright Side right after this. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. Thank you for joining us, friends. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Sandy in Florida. Hello, Sandy. Good morning. Hey. So your mom has sciatica, inflamed or, or uh, some kind of sciatic nerve irritation, and she doesn't want to sit down or, or go to the bathroom. Uh, I assume she doesn't want to sit down in general, right? Probably hurts right. when she sits. Yeah, right. it's, it's pretty miserable. So the sciatic nerve runs down the back of the leg, starts at the lower, lower part of the spine, and runs, runs around the buttocks and down the, down the leg. And it's not unusual for this part of the body to get inflamed for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's chemical inflammation, and number two, there's mechanical inflammation over the course of time as our the way we walk changes the way we hold our body changes not to mention the fact that our spine starts to degenerate compression can occur in that area so the first thing you want to think about is mechanics I would if I had an issue like that that was that severe Sandy I'd be going to a rolfer or a chiropractor a chiropractor that does adjustments and they can manipulate that area if there's a mechanical compression in there that needs to be released that's not a nutritional issue necessarily there's also a wonderful form of body work called rolfing r-o-l-f-i-n-g rolfing funny name but started by a lady named Ida Rolf and it is amazing I mean amazing for dealing with any kind of structural defects or structural disorders and it sounds like this is very likely for your mom how old is she by the way She's 73. Oh, almost guaranteed she's dealing with that. Now, rolfing is, can be a little bit intense. Uh, it's a good intense, though, because when you're done with it, it feels awesome. Uh, I'm not sure if she, she might be a little bit fragile for rolfing, but you'll have to go to a, rolf, a rolfing therapist to determine that. Uh, certainly a chiropractor. Uh, I would be going to a chiropractor at the very least. Now, at the age of 70, guaranteed she's got other health challenges. The sciatica may be the most prominent and the most dramatic, but she's got to have other stuff going on. It would be helpful for your mom to keep track of them. It's unlikely, in my experience, it's unlikely that people in their 70s really, they just want relief. Uh, so, Okay. So, is that your mom? Uh, yeah, that's my mom. She's in a okay. lot of pain. She's like, what's oh, going poor on? Thing. What's going on? Oh, yeah, poor thing. In the meantime, okay. you know, I, I don't, when you have that kind of severe pain, you might want to try a cortisol shot. But don't rely on them because they're not great, but they do help with pain. Do you know about those? Has she had one yet? Um, she's been begging for one, but no. You know what? Uh, I'd I, rather not go to of a doctor not. at this Of course point. not. Of course not. But, you know, really you want to be... 
you want to be logical and rational about this. I don't like drugs any more than any, you know, than you do or anybody else does. But the fact is, when a 70 year old woman is in that kind of pain, a cortisol shot can give her dramatic relief. Don't depend on it. That's the problem. The relief is so dramatic, we depend on it. So maybe a cortisol shot, and then have her find somebody who can manipulate to to resolve the decompression. Now, under ordinary circumstances, I would have you doing a food diary, looking for problem foods, looking for foods that cause the problem to get worse. Uh, because all of this is going to uh, have an impact on how well she absorbs her nutrition. Well, but she she's... stopped eating. So well, she you... hasn't been eating for two for two weeks. And because she's in she pain? She had eggs, she had diarrhea. When she had spinach, it stayed yeah, she... in. But Sandy. two days later, she had diarrhea. So... Sandy, she's got a problem. It's not a yes. sciatica problem. It's a digestive problem. Yes, so it is. Get her on the get her on some, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I could give you the full-blown protocol, but it's unlikely she's going to want to do it. So let me just tell you what, what I would be doing in a perfect world, what she should be doing in a perfect world, Okay. Okay. Number one, looking for foods that cause digestive problems and not eating them. Eggs are like, are, are not, it's not unusual that eggs would cause a problem. Proteins in general can cause a problem. Have her use her ultimate enzymes with all her meals okay. and have her using the ultimate enzymes between meals as well on an empty stomach. That will help with the inflammation. Uh, the nightly essence probiotics, have her eating as little as possible, but eating nutrient dense foods, particularly vegetables and especially particularly fermented vegetables like sauerkraut if she likes sauerkraut or any fermented vegetables. Uh, have her do liquid nutrition. Bone soup can be very helpful for her, not just because it's, it's liquid nutrition, liquid protein, but also because the proteins can help with the joints and the spinal cord particularly. So bone soup, mm -hmm. aloe vera, that can be very soothing for the gut, or noni juice for that matter, can be soothing for the gut. If you don't have a Vitamix, get one, or a Nutribullet, or a Ninja, something that I keeps the... Then you make her vegetable juices and vegetable okay. soups. Right. Okay, vegetable juices with the fiber and vegetable juices and the fermented foods. Have her using the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, sipping slowly and small yeah. amounts because it'll give her some diarrhea probably. It does. Uh, I figured, so you got to have her sipping on it slowly and have her um, uh, do it with food. It will help her if she do it with, does it with food. This is for everybody. A lot. This is a common complaint about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. If you get diarrhea or cramping or bloating after it, it's a sign of malabsorption. And it's an important sign because it means you're not absorbing your nutrients from food either. So you want to address this. If you, if you bloat from or have digestive discomfort or diarrhea from the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, that's an indicator of malabsorption that needs to be addressed. So using her Beyond Tangy Tangerine with food, using her Beyond Tangy Tangerine in smaller doses, and sipping on it slowly. Okay. Also have her doing anti-inflammatory nutrients, particularly the ultimate EFAs, nine capsules a day, magnesium, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams a day, vitamin E, you have to go to the health food store and get that, 400 international units a day, and something called alpha lipoic acid, which is wonderfully anti-inflammatory. We're going to talk about that tomorrow uh, because it relates to carnitine, uh, maybe 400 milligrams or so of alpha lipoic acid. And if there's any weekend warriors or athletes out there, everything I just told Sandy is very good for you if you're dealing with inflammation, uh, post-workout inflammation as well. Uh, if she can keep her sugar intake down, that would be helpful. And going ketogenic would be definitely in her interest and keeping her, uh, keeping her caloric intake down in general is is a good idea. Carb intake down and caloric intake down. I've been um, giving her a lot of the glucose gel. That'll help as well, but in the long run, that's not going to help her with the immediate pain. And that is, okay. uh, you know, I've uh, I've seen people with sciatic pain. It is awful, awful, awful. And so all of the things I, t I told you about will work in the short run. The glucogel okay. caps are important in the long run, but uh, but the beyond uh, the um, uh, the bone soup has the nutrients in the same nutrients as the glucogel, but in a liquid fashion that'll e be easier for her body to process. Likewise, my bone broth protein, by the way, too. She might want to try that. All right, that's tons of information for you. Good luck Thank to your you. mom, and God bless Thank you. I hope everything works out. Thanks for your call, Sandy. Take Thank care. Thank you a million times over. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. All right, Angela in Florida. Oh, we just lost Angela in Florida. Sorry about that, Angela. Left her on, left Angela on hold too long, and I apologize for that, and that's just the way it goes here on the bright side. And now... Uh, We've come to the end of our show, and we don't have any calls. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell you about this uh, this gal I talked to yesterday, Dina. She had an amazing story, all kinds of health challenges. I'm trying to find her file here. Of course, I can't find it now that I want to, now that I want to talk about it. Well, 
we'll just have to wait till tomorrow on that. The point I wanted to make here is if you are dealing with a kind of health challenge that encompasses multi-symptoms and you don't know where to begin, this is where the triangle of disease can be so helpful. And I know how it is. You come in and you, you're, you come, go to the doctor, you, you go to your naturopath or your alternative health practitioner, you're just dealing with a whole range of symptoms, blood sugar symptoms, you feel tired, your skin is breaking out, you got bone problems, you don't know bone or joint problems, and you don't know what to do. Always backtrack to the triangle of disease. You don't have to worry about specific protocols for Alzheimer's and specific protocols for arthritis and sciatica and uh, autoimmune diseases, whatever flavor you may have. Just backtrack to the triangle of disease. It is so simple, you guys. Work on the digestive system. Focus on food elimination. Do a food diary. Caloric restriction. Fasting. Get on, the, uh, uh, get on a good probiotic supplement like the Nightly Essence. Use fermented foods. Use nutrient-dense substances, foods that are easy for the body to process like bone soup and bone broth protein and, and vegetable juices. Then you move to point two on the triangle, which is the blood sugar system. Caloric restriction, restricting your calories, that is going to help stabilize your blood sugar. But eating more fat, uh, going ketogenic, and even if you're working out a little bit, eating more protein. I'm always a little bit careful about saying to people to eat high protein because when we think about high protein, most of us think about hamburgers and steaks and and uh, protein foods that aren't necessarily great. Uh, steaks and meat are not necessarily good sources of protein because of how cattle are processed and because of hormones and also because of cooking. Another problem with protein that doesn't really people don't really talk about a lot is if you're not working or, or exercising or using that protein, that that protein can get turned into sugar and ultimately turned into fat very quickly. This is why people who, who try to go high protein when they have diabetes can't figure out sometimes, well, gosh, I'm, I'm high protein, I'm not eating carbs, but my blood sugar is still high. Well, it's because the body can very effectively turn that protein into sugar. So you got to be a little bit careful with the protein, but working out in combination with protein is, is always a good strategy. Just be a little bit careful with it. And then, of course, using your B-complex to help process sugar and zinc and selenium and sulfur, more fiber, more water. And then finally, last but not least, relaxing the body. Do not underestimate the power and the importance of relaxing the musculoskeletal system as well as the nervous system by using your brain correctly. There's so much wonderful stuff that we can do to get healthy without having to interface with the medical model. That's what we are about on the Bright Side. That's what we're about at Longevity as well. If you're interested in joining the Bright Side Ben team, please call 866-735-2470. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a beautiful, wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 